Hello, welcome to the Green Place Foundation House. Come on in. This is a place that's meant to welcome researchers, grad students, interns, and people who would like to volunteer at the farm. It's been set up as a very comfortable place. We have it a blast from the past. We want it to feel like you're visiting grandma's house. It has been used as a, it is being used as an Airbnb until we have enough um, return, um, interns and people to use it. And it's provided a really interesting door to people who've never been on a farm before. Many of our um, guests come. It's their first time to see not just an organic farm, but any farm. So we send them to the gardens, the pigs, the cattle. I want to just sum up what it has been to, meant to people. And the little boy, about 10 years old, came. And his mom wrote back and said, Mom, I want to work really hard and buy a farm like this and be a farmer. All because of this house. My name is Thomas Harding. I am uh, the president of the Grain Place Foundation, and we want to thank you for your participation in our annual field day. Uh, we're all here for a board meeting, uh, although some of us are virtual, as will our field day be. I uh, just wanted you to know that in 1953, the Don Vetter, Dave Vetter's father, converted this farm uh, to a certified organic farm, uh, which eventually became fully certified uh, under the rule in 1975. Dave's continued that good work. Uh, we continue to do through our nine-year rotation and our uh, value-added processing because we also added the Grain Place Foods. Uh, we have shared our knowledge and our farming expertise uh, with people from around the world, and we continue to do it through our field days, through uh, on uh, university speaking engagements, and Dave speaks all over the world. We want to thank you again for participating we want to thank you for uh, supporting the Grain Place Foundation. We are a 501c3 foundation. Everything you contribute to us is fully tax deductible. Welcome to the second half of Grain Place Foundation's annual and this year virtual field day. Our keynote speaker is Bree Tinser, Executive Director of the Organic Farming Research Foundation. Ms. Tinser has 20 years of leadership experience working on organic food policy, farming, and research issues. Previously, she has served as Director of Policy and Programs for California Certified Organic Farmers, as Lead Lobbyist on Food and Agricultural Issues for the Union of Concerned Scientists, and Acting Policy Program Director and later Legislative Coordinator for OFRF from 2000 to 2006. Ms. Tinser has served on the boards of the Northwest Center for Alternatives to Pesticides, the California Climate and Agricultural Network, and the National Sustainable Agricultural Coalition. She holds a BA in Community Studies from the University of California, Santa Cruz, and received both a Certificate in Conflict Resolution and an MA in International Environmental Policy from the Monterey Institute of International Studies. Enjoy her presentation, and I'll see you in the Q&A. Hi, I'm honored to be here with all of you today as part of the Grain Place Foundation's annual conference and field day. Organic production, as you all probably know, has potential to really lead the way in the transformation of agriculture to more restorative, more regenerative, and more resilient systems. The term regenerative gets used a lot these days when talking about best agricultural practices. And honestly, I've sometimes struggled with how many different meanings and interpretations there are of the word, some of which are referring to organic production and some aren't. Just out of curiosity, I looked up the word regenerative and found even dictionaries had different definitions of the term. But the one I liked uh, was from Cambridge Dictionary, and it said relating to the improvement of a place or system, especially by making it more active or successful. This is exactly what I believe organic producers are doing. And by continuing to invest in research, education, and outreach in organic systems, I think we can foster a more rapid transformation to regenerative organic systems. 
This is a particularly critical time because consumer buying trends are shifting as their understanding of the relationship between how we grow our food and the future of our natural resources is evolving. Specialty crops were definitely an initial driver of organic with consumers. And in recent years, demand for organic dairy and meat has increased demand for organic grain. Um, demand in those categories is absolutely still strong, but consumer preferences are evolving and more people are looking for organic grain for bread, their cereal, beer, I mean, honestly, you name it. And the pandemic is further shifting buying trends and we're only beginning to understand what that's gonna mean. But we can definitely already see from industry data that consumers are wanting to stock their pantries and that their buying organic is part of their focus on health. Um, people are experimenting with new shopping strategies. They're trying grocery delivery. They're exploring online purchases and buying more from direct markets. People are changing their eating habits too. They're eating out much less often, they're cooking, they're baking more. All this has created a shift from institutional to retail customers. Organic grains are absolutely flying off the shelves. The rapid switch from selling bulk to bag products is putting a strain on the system, but it's wonderful to see that processors, mills, and the rest of the sector are adapting quickly. We are definitely living through a time of many unknowns, but it's also an opportunity to really help chart the future of how America eats and how we farm. As one of the major grain producing countries of the world, the US is poised to be a real driver of change by investing in our organic growers. There's still a very small percent of US production, but the potential is there. For years, the high domestic demand for organic grain has been largely met with imports. Um, increasingly, Handlers, manufacturers, and consumers are looking not just for organic grain, but for domestically sourced organic grain. Um, while some of the challenges for U.S. producers in keeping up with this growing demand are economic, and there's definitely market-based challenges, but I believe that many of the challenges producers faced are production-based, often related to insufficient access to support, to training, and technical resources. Our public research institutions, extension service, USDA conservation programs, crop insurance programs, etc., have for decades favored conventional production. Uh, when I started working in this field, organic producers weren't even eligible for crop insurance. But driven by change in the last four farm bills, these trends are starting to reverse. And I believe that by working together, sharing resources, sharing knowledge, and advocating for strong public policy to level the playing field, we can make that shift even faster. We know that farmers need cutting edge research that's relevant to their farming systems, proven documented trials that minimize the risk of adopting new practices. And this is where our work at the Organic Farming Research Foundation comes in. We regularly survey organic producers to better understand their challenges. And then we work to ensure that the needs of America's organic farmers and ranchers are heard and addressed. Over a thousand certified organic producers took our last survey in 2015, and many more participated in the 21 listening sessions we held across the country. Um, based on input from nearly 2,000 certified organic growers across the country, we put forth a comprehensive set of research recommendations, which we published as a national organic research agenda. Not surprisingly, the identified priorities varied significantly by region. But there was also commonalities in the need for research on weed management and soil health. In fact, 74% of our survey participants rated soil health as a high priority. Within the category of soil health, uh, specific challenges were diverse, um, and they included topics such as the effect of cover crops and crop rotations on fertility, effective and affordable strategies for building soil organic matter, the role of soil microbes in disease suppression, and more. Um, other high areas of concern included weed management, which 67% of our respondents uh, indicated was a high priority for them for additional research, and 64% of the surveyed farmers listed seed availability and breeding as priority areas. Of the respondents to the survey, the grain producers identified unique challenges related to weed management, nutrient management, water holding capacity of soils, crop rotations, and support identifying markets for crops in diverse longer term rotations. Uh, I'm sure none of this is new or surprising to those of you who are producers here listening um, today. 
This winter, we've undertaken another, this will be our seventh national survey to better understand the most pressing challenges of organic producers. Um, a lot has changed since we took our last survey and we wanna better understand what those challenges are and what today's obstacles are. The survey has gone out to every certified organic farmer and rancher on the national organic programs list. And we're simultaneously conducting a similar survey of transitioning growers. Uh, that population is, of course, much more difficult to identify because we don't have a formal list. Uh, but we are following up with both of these surveys um, by conducting virtual focus groups that will be around the country this winter and beyond. And I'm really excited because I believe this project is going to provide our community with the most comprehensive summary of the research needs of the organic and transitioning grower community to date. One of the things we've learned from doing farmer surveys over the years is that there hasn't been sufficient investment in organic soil health research. And what there has been hasn't been sufficiently translated and disseminated back to the producer community. Research findings that sit on the shelves of academia simply aren't helping producers. OFRF has taken that challenge very seriously. And over the last several years, we've dedicated ourselves to conducting in-depth literature reviews of USDA funded soil health research findings summarizing those findings and publishing a series of guidebooks and webinars that are designed for farmers and agricultural professionals. We've published 11 different publications on various aspects of soil health, from how soil management relates to water use and efficacy, nutrient management, carbon sequestration, and management of on-farm risks. These resources have been really well received. Um, the guides have been downloaded approximately 50,000 times. And when we've con conducted webinars um, on the content of these publications, we've had huge numbers of participants, so much so that we've actually had to upgrade our technology platform to accommodate such large numbers of participants. Um, all of these resources are on our website. They're all free of charge. And any of those of you who are producers today are listening and want hard copies, please, email our office, or give us a call. We're happy to put some in the mail to you. Another key way that we're using our survey results to inform our own grant making program. We've invested millions of dollars and funded well over 300 individual research grants in our years as a grant maker. Um, this year, we are very excited to say we're funding more grants in one year than we ever have in a single grant round. Um, and that's thanks in part to a new partnership from the Foundation for Food and Agricultural Research, as well as other industry partners that have contributed to our pool of funds for grant making. The research we fund is really aimed at helping growers tackle real world economic, agronomic, and environmental issues, um, including helping growers mitigate and adapt to climate change and extreme weather, whether flooding or droughts, as well as how to manage emerging pests and disease. Uh, we just completed a review of the impacts of our OFRF funded research and found that our results were leading to practical solutions to support resiliency and regenerative practices on organic farms. The investments on soil health and fertility management have been particularly impactful in helping growers learn how to sequester carbon and mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. We invite you to go to our website. We have a free online database of research results on these and other topics. Um, and we have a growing body of research that's directly addressed organic grain production. Some examples of research that we funded that you can read about include a project on nutrient budgeting in organic grain production that was conducted at the University of Manitoba. Um, another project was an examination of organic grain productivity to support organic livestock industry um, conducted at Michigan State University. Um, there are quite a few projects um, that we've invested in related to plant breeding, related to grain production, um, many of which were funded in partnership with Cliff Bar Seed Matters Initiative, including grants to support the development of GMO resistant corn uh, at the Seed We Need project in North Dakota. Um, we've invested in more nutritious barley and farmer-based participatory plant breeding for organic quinoa, buckwheat and spelt at Washington State University. One other project that I thought was pretty um, 
interesting was an evaluation of the use of a leaf popper resistant alfalfa and organic rotations at Ohio State. These are just a few examples, but please dig in, you know, use the research and let us know if there are other areas where you need more, more resources. We're, we're here to be a resource to, to you, the growers. We've also taken the needs identified by farmers and that national organic research agenda to policymakers. And year after year, we've advocated for increased public investments in organic farming. In the most recent Farm Bill in 2018, OFRF led an effort to increase USDA's investment in competitive funding for organic research. Uh, it was initially $3 million a year back in the 2002 Farm Bill. And with the most recent Farm Bill, that pool of funds has grown to $50 million a year. We're very, very excited for that. We've brought the research agenda we published to the USDA, to those who are managing these new federal dollars for competitive research to ensure that when USDA is making a grant uh, in organic systems, that it's actually addressing a challenge area identified by the producer community. Um, and to complement that, we're now working to develop a policy roadmap to inform federal policies that can best foster the potential of organic systems as a climate solutions, including both research dollars um, and effective use of conservation programs. Finally, we're using the science-based information about organic systems to educate the public and consumers about organic farming systems. This was actually something that was um, identified to us by farmers in our previous survey. Um, growers expressed frustration with limited consumer understanding of the practices and systems utilized by the producers. In April, we launched a campaign called Organic for Climate, which includes a digital toolkit for consumers, advocates, and policymakers. Um, it had a companion social media campaign that really has had incredible engagement. Honestly, when we launched this campaign in Earth Day in April, um, we weren't sure if it would get people's attention. The world was just in the early stages of a global pandemic. Um, but I think we found the opposite. People were home, but they were eager to ensure the food they were buying and eating is healthy, not just for their families, but also for the environment and supporting environmental resiliency. As we look to the future of our work, we see new urgency. Um, there's a lot of work left to be done furthering research, education, and advocacy for organic and to grow organic past the relatively small percentage of U.S. farmland that it currently occupies. I sometimes hear those in the organic community debating whether the sector needs to get broader or better. I believe that this is ultimately the wrong question. When our staff and board recently came together to work on a new strategic plan, we came back to our founding mission of supporting both improvement and widespread adoption of organic systems. We're right now working to formalize new partnerships to best serve underserved regions, including launching a soil health training program tailored to farmers in the Southern region. We're also doing more to educate the public about the benefits of organic agriculture. And perhaps most exciting, we're working to translate a robust scientific analysis of best organic practices for climate mitigation and adaptation into actionable policy initiatives so that our next farm bill can do even more to pave the way. The future of food and agriculture is organic and it's gonna take all of us working together, investing in more research and doing more to support innovation and economic opportunity to make the kind of change we owe to future generations. And thank you all the growers for being part of that change. Appreciate you having me here today.